Okay, we're back, and uh, I think I misspoke at the end of the last video. This is not a performance calculation sheet. That's uh, that's coming soon, and that'll that's filled out by the uh, first officer and has all the V speeds calculated manually. But this is a load sheet, and it tells us uh, our zero fuel weight. Which, if we go to our FMS here, go back and look at the uh, performance screen, uh, the zero fuel weight is indeed entered as uh, 260,300 pounds and that's precisely what we have on the load sheet and the other thing that we haven't entered yet is the stabilizer trim um, for takeoff and the stabilizer trim trim tab is basically a uh, it's it's a control surface within a control surface it is a tiny little flap uh, in this case attached to the elevator on the tail elevator is what pitches the aircraft up and down and so the trim basically uh, will hold the elevator in a certain position and uh, for takeoff obviously we want uh, it oriented nose up um, and based on the the MAC toe uh, which is uh, 21.85 they've calculated a stabilizer trim setting of 2.85 nose up um, and if I go to my takeoff reference screen here the CG trim percentage actually corresponds to this MAC toe so I'm going to round up from uh, 21.85 to 22 and therefore the the calculated trim is 2.8 that pretty much agrees with 2.85 so that looks good to me and from that uh, let's go ahead and set the Thanks. the trim 2.8 um, the trim is actually set uh, here in the center console it's this uh, this little uh, lever here but uh, right now all of the control surfaces are immobile because uh, they're all controlled by hydraulics and the hydraulic pumps for uh, the uh, stabilizer trim uh, uh, the center pumps are responsible for for their operation so I'm going to uh, turn on the both central hydraulic pumps and then bring up the, a uh, zoomed in view of the center console and uh, the stabilizer trim reading is right here you can see it's a little bit under 2.5 so I'm just going to increase it to 2.8 uh, there's the PCS so let's go ahead and compare we have V1124, VR129, V2139 that looks right to me looks great let me take a look okay my numbers are good and the numbers do indeed agree um, and I think that's good enough for the uh, for the trim so we're gonna get out of this and then go ahead and turn off the hydraulic pumps we uh, we turn them on from uh, right to left and so I'm going to disengage them from left to right to prevent hydraulic fluid cross feeding and uh, that looks good so let me get out of the FMS and let's concentrate on the cockpit uh, for a few moments here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, flight director which uh, are little crosshairs that show up on the and it won't stay in the upright position, and we tried to adjust it ourselves and weren't able to do that. Could you give maintenance the penalty if you could come and want to take a look at it? Thanks. Okay, so the, the flight attendant stopped by and apparently said there's a problem with a seat back or something like that. So we're going to have to call into maintenance and do that very quickly. So I'm going to abandon what I'm doing. Okay, we'll make that call in a second. All right. Uh, let's see if I remember the ground frequency for that. I think it's uh, okay. Uh, and I think we want to report a seat back. Jet set line. It's jet set 266. Jet set 266. Go ahead. We're having a problem with the seat back in 45 Bravo. Could you send somebody over? Thanks a lot. Okay. Before we were rudely interrupted, I think I was going to turn on the flight director. The flight director are basically crosshairs, uh, vertical and uh, and horizontal crosshairs that. Uh, um, basically guide us when we have manual control of the aircraft on the primary flight display here on the uh, artificial horizon. Uh, so I'm going to turn those on as well as the um, auto throttle 
which uh, basically means the autopilot and flight computers uh, will uh, control our, uh, our, our thrust in flight as long as we have that turned on. Uh, so we have our heading bug and our altitude set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set the speed bugs for, uh, you know, you have V1, VR, V2. Those are all set and then we have our flap speeds which are 20 knot increments above. Um, we're going to turn on the navigational radios. I'm going to bug the EFRA which is the emergency altitude that'll be 1,000 feet above ground. Um, and uh, let's see, go ahead and turn on the flight director for our co-pilot since uh, he's not around here to, to do that. And then uh, we also have our uh, horizontal situation indicator here which is basically an overhead map but it's much more because it has information about navigation and uh, and where we're headed. Uh, basically uh, right now the reading is 286 which means we're, uh, we're the nose of the aircraft is pointed uh, straight ahead to heading uh, 286 uh, that would be west northwest and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a bit so that we can see our flight plan we ought to have all the legs in there by now so you can see RZS, CNO, Roby, SNS, and uh, I guess that's KSFO at the very end. Um, and again, that's not oriented like a map with, with uh, north straight up. It's actually uh, uh, like a GPS almost where the nose is uh, face, uh, facing in the upward orientation position on, on the HSI. Uh, we can change that uh, and in this configuration north is up but uh, I prefer uh, nose up so uh, I'm gonna zoom back in to a range of say 20 miles and um, here's our runway and uh, runway heading and then uh, our initial uh, heading bug there we can also display other things here like uh, uh, information about the waypoints and the uh, the VORs that we're tracking with our navigational radios. And I'm also going to set the uh, decision height which is of course only important on approach but we might as well set it now uh, because I don't have the approach plates for KSFO in front of me. Okay, there's the fuel slip which basically tells us uh, how much fuel's been loaded on the aircraft. I'm going to accept that and I'm also, I'm also going to say that uh, at this point uh, the cockpit is fully configured so when we come back we can do the um, departure briefing and the uh, before start checklist. So uh, stay tuned.